Welcome. Welcome to Let's Learn About, a show where we teach you things you didn't need to know. We're going to teach them to you anyway. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our final episode of 2021. <laughs> Can ah. you believe? Oh. What, like, the final of, of 2021? Or this is the final episode? Because I kind of can't believe either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, we are, what? This is the 27th this is going up. Yeah. So... That is four days. We have four days left of 2021. Oh my God, I know. This just... year has been... It's been an insane year for both it's of us. Insane. Well, um, not just it for both of us, just insane in just, general. Yeah, just in general. Um, <laughs> so much has happened this year. Yeah, it's just Jesus. been crazy. Um, and now we're 99 episodes deep into <laughs> our podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got like so many different milestones all coming at once and it's just crazy. I think after a year that has just been like particularly for both of us, it's just mm. been like crazy in so many different ways. Um, yeah. This is also just just crazy. Like <laughs> our little podcast is growing up. It um, is. And weirdly, uh, all of our milestones seem to center around tens. Yeah. We were talking about this the other day. There's something about the number like 10, like a yeah. uh, hundred, a thousand stuff, like stuff in the tens. Yeah. And they all seem to be our milestones at the moment. Yeah. Like, it's just weird. Never in a million years would we have factored that all of them would happen around the same time. And at the end of the, by the end of the year as well. Yeah. Like it's just, yeah, it's what just mad. Actual hell. Yeah. yeah. Oh my it's been, went then. I was gonna say I think our uh, our if we haven't already decided what we're doing for either our tangent Tuesday that's going to be the last one of the year I think we need to have a bit of a chat for our Patreon listeners yes just about just a roundup on yeah. everything that's happened to us this year because yeah. it's been a wild one yeah. for those who haven't listened throughout the year you may have got little sl- glimpses and slivers yeah. of what we've been through this year yeah but I think um, we might need to do a roundup episode. Definitely. Yeah. We've already just recorded last week, I think, we recorded mm-hmm. a special episode that is going to be going up on Patreon towards the end of the year. Um yeah. that is us going through our Spotify wrapped. And that was really cool. Um we that just talked about our stats and yeah, that was really cool. Um we will obviously we'll talk about our Patreon at the end in our normal plug. But yeah. Um, yeah it's we're loving how it feels over there at the moment we've got like a nice little nice little place where we can just share everything um about the podcast and about our lives too and we can just chat with you and it's so much fun over there um go and join us if you want you'll get more information at the end of this episode um but yes so i think without further ado we should dive right in dive right in to the final episode of 2021 yeah and you have the honors I do have the honours, and in true honours fashion, it is not Christmassy at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, to be fair, Christmas was two days ago. Yeah, so... that's true. Yeah. Um, oh, also, ooh, um, it's my birthday when this episode goes out. It is your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday for you for today. <laughs> Feels weird um, saying the beginning of December. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, when this episode is going out, when you're listening to this, if you're listening to it on the day that it goes out, um, please say happy birthday to me because it's, yes. <laughs> it, is, it is my birthday. It's Charlotte's um. birthday today. I'm really sorry for the episode I'm about to do on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Oh, dear. Um, it's not birthday related either. Yeah. So <laughs> there was going to be a birthday related episode already up on our Patreon. Um, but then I decided to do a different topic instead. Um, but in a couple of weeks, um, on my first episode after our 100th episode, I'll be yes. talking about birthday traditions then because it will be slap bang in the middle of our two birthdays. So, um, yeah, but Anyway, I just wanted to get that in there. I just wanted to make it all about me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I brought some poppers with me because then I would, for those who are watching this episode on YouTube, it would be like, boo boo, yeah. <laughs> insert gif or something here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah Happy uh, birthday for today. Uh, thanks. Um, <laughs> okay, episode time. Episode time. <laughs> right. So birthday girl, <laughs> yeah. what would you say is your favourite musical? There's no wrong oh, answer to God. this. Oh God, you can't ask me this. I can um, and I've just done it. <laughs> oh God. Um, I I mean, I have a list of favourites, but <laughs> um, 
so I've always said next to normal, but I don't know if that is like my ultimate favorite musical because mm. I feel like my proper favorite would be one that actually like gives me joy. And that is yes. very, very sad, um, but it is great. Um, I'd say right now, probably Beetlejuice. To be fair, Beetlejuice is a really good show. Just because I've listened to it so many times. Um, I'd love to be able to see it, music. but it hasn't, it's never come to the UK. Um, I would, I am like really waiting for the day when it, it comes to London, but who knows? It's reopened in New York though, even though it closed. Has it? Yeah. It, Ooh. Re, it's re, reopening in New York. So that's cool. But anyway, I'd say probably that right now, but it changes okay. all the time. Right. Mine hands down is Chicago. Okay. I love Chicago. I love the, I've seen it on the West End. I love the movie. I yeah. think it's one of the best musical adaptations of all time. Yeah. Um, proof in the pudding in the fact that it won Academy Awards, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's a great watch. Yeah. Um, I've also actually, seen it in London. Have you? Who did mm. you see it with? Because mine was when Bonnie Tyler was. Oh, I have no idea. It. I saw it in 2011. So <laughs> uh, was it even before that? I can't even, I think I was in, yeah, I was in year 11 in school. We went on a school trip. Mm. Um, so it was 2011. So I, I can barely remember anything about it now because it was 10 years ago. But <laughs> <laughs> I just distinctly remember uh, Bonnie Tyler. I swear it was Bonnie Tyler was in. I think she was Roxy. Okay. Um, and um, some lady from The X Factor who's got an incredible, who had an incredible voice. I remember she had an incredible voice. was Matron Mama Morton. And we mm. went as part of our drama group. Okay, yeah. Because by year 10 year 11 it was I swear every bloody month we were going up to london and going yeah. to watch something yeah um i actually introduced my mum to the movie chicago literally a couple of weeks ago because she turned yeah. around and she was like, i've never watched it you know what like, i don't actually think i've seen the film <gasps> <laughs> you know I all those things it. that we're planning on doing next weekend oh my god oh, yeah yes. by the way next weekend in terms of recording yeah. charlotte's coming to mine this yeah. time and um we are doing our hundredth episode recording yes spoilers we actually know what we're doing now we do yeah we're not going to tell you yeah. because spoilers um but that is going up in our very first episode of the new year on yeah. the third mm -hmm. um so listen out for that we yeah. uh it's definitely one that we have to record together so yeah Charlotte's and we'll also, we're gonna give each other our christmas presents we are we're gonna yep. play D. &D. it's we gonna are. be a day it's gonna it's be a gonna great be day, day. Um, I'm bring, bringing in the snacks we're gonna do some photos yeah. i really hope there's enough sunlight <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna end up having to leave at like 11 p.m or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll work it out that's next week but yeah. um we tangented we always yeah. do this yeah Flip it but yes right. we if we have time <laughs> in our crazy time, day, we should watch you Chicago. Watch Chicago. You have to watch Chicago. It's yeah. so good. Um, but yeah, because it's my favorite musical and because I introduced it to my mum a couple of weeks ago, who, yeah. by the way, loves it yeah. and also didn't realize how many people are in it. Because every yeah. five minutes she was like, oh, that's Bridget Jones from Bridget Jones. <laughs> I said, like, yes, that's Renee Zellweger. And then she was like, oh is Richard Gere's in this is this how did you not know Richard Gere is in this movie and then Queen Latifah showed up and yes. she, my mum was like oh, Queen Latifah yes. <laughs> yeah. like, yes I told you loads of people are in this movie yeah oh she loved it cool but I thought it would be really interesting mm. to find out the real life inspiration behind Ooh. the movie Chicago. Yeah. And the reason why I wanted to do this episode today is because I found out literally this morning yeah. <laughs> that the movie Chicago with Renee Zellweger and Catherine Zeta-Jones and everyone was released yeah. on December the 27th. Wow. 2002. Wow. That's yeah. cool. So in honor of it being released, it being its anniversary release date. Yeah. I would discuss the real life inspiration yes. behind both Chicago the movie and Chicago the play. Cool. <laughs> so Chicago or the play that Chicago is based on mm. was actually written all the way back in 1926 okay. by a lady called Maureen Dallas Watkins. Mm. Now she was a columnist um, as well as a screenwriter um, and 
while the play is in itself a fictional piece, yeah. it's actually more of a satire. Uh, on the concept of the celebrity criminal, especially in okay. Chicago back in the day. Yeah. Um, and in fact, was actually based on two unrelated cases in 1924 involving two murderesses. So two separate cases within the same year that uh, Maureen Dallas Watkins uh, wrote the column about in the um, the Chicago Daily Tribune or something like that back in yeah. the day. But the two murderesses was a lady called uh, Beulah Anan, who is the inspiration for Roxy Hart, mm -hmm. and Belva Gartner, who's the inspiration for Velma. And I love those two names. Yeah. In and of themselves. They're great names. Yeah. They were both suspected and later acquitted of their individual separate murders that they right. supposedly did. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, Watkins, as a reporter, covered them for the Chicago Tribune. Um. A lot of people within these two cases were the inspirations for a lot of the characters that she then created in the play. Yeah. But I will go into them in a little bit. Um, but yeah, these were like two famed Chicago courtroom cases. Right. And she put them all together to create the screenplay. Well, not the screenplay, the play. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so because it's a satire, not everything that happened during the actual cases ended up being in the show. Yeah, she, yeah. she, you know, typical writer fashion, artistic yeah. interpretation and all that lot. But I thought just before we go into the musical that she created, well, not the musical, she wrote the play. It was later turned into a musical. Yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm going to actually just go back and briefly give a little rundown as to who these two ladies were yeah because they have fascinating fascinating cases i'll start with beulah who as i said was roxy mm. in the play now she was born beulah may sheriff in kentucky to mary and john sheriff and while she was living in kentucky she actually married her first husband but they very quickly divorced um and then she met car mechanic albert al Anan, who is the real life inspiration for Amos Hart. Okay. So they got married and they went to Chicago or they got to Chicago and then got married. Some cases um, alter the facts. Yeah. But either way, they got married on March 29th, 1920. So four years before this all went down. Mm. And while they're in Chicago, Albert found work as a mechanic, much like Amos is in the show. Yeah. Um, and Beulah became a bookkeeper at a place called the Tenants Model Laundry. Mm. Now, it was at her time at the laundry that she met a man called Harry Cowstert, who is the real-life inspiration for Fred Casely. Mm. And the two quickly began to have an affair. Right. <laughs> now, this affair lasted for, like, a good few years. Like, this went on a while. All the way, in fact, to April the 3rd, 1924. Yeah. Eula was only 23 at the time. And whilst they were in the married couple's bedroom, so in her and Owl's bedroom, she shot and killed Cowstead God. in the back. Um, now, according to her initial story, because the thing with Beulah is she changed her story a lot. Yeah. No one actually knows the true facts of the crime. But apparently, according to the initial story that the police took down at the time, she said they'd been drinking wine, at which Calstead had brought over and got into an argument. There was a gun on the bed of all places, uh, and they both reached for it. But Beulah got to it first and she shot Calstead. So mm. self-defense. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, she um, shot him whilst he was putting on his coat and hat uh, trying to leave. Now, people within their area said that they heard a Foxtrot record called Hulalu being played over and over and over and over and over again for about four hours <laughs> while she sat there drinking cocktails and watching Cowstead die. Oh my God. And only then did she call her husband to say that she had shot and killed a man who had tried to make love to her oh in their God. place. Um, so initially she confessed to the murder, then she changed her story later on and said that she shot Cowstead in self-defense, fearing that she was about to be raped. Uh, one of her later versions of the story, apparently he told her he was leaving her and she reacted badly and shot him. 
there are other stories that say that she told him that she was pregnant and he didn't like that so right. he went to attack her and then she shot him yeah um there's so many stories um prosecutors basically summarized that Calstead had threatened to leave Beulah um, and she responded to his threat by shooting him due to a jealous rage and then she finally and funnily enough this is actually part of the movie that they kind of build into the plot uh, her final story that she actually told at trial was the pregnancy story. Right. Um, so she told him he, she was pregnant. They both struggled and they both reached for the gun. Yeah. That's a very big part of her story. The fact yeah. that they both reached for the gun to the point where, and again, spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched the movie, there is a whole musical number called Both Reach for the Gun. <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorite music. It's one of my favorite musical pieces in the entire movie. It's brilliant. The yeah. way they played it is excellent. Now, her husband, despite all of this, stood by her after her arrest while she was in jail. He basically took all of his money out of the bank and got her like the best lawyers. He stood by yeah. her through her trial. Jeez. And then uh, to spoiler anyone, um, she was acquitted, basically. Yeah. Um, the trial ended. She got acquitted. And on May 25th, 1924 Bueller announced that she left her husband oh god <laughs> and there is actually a quote that was given she goes I have left my husband he is too slow <laughs> oh god I love it it's oh. like wow this man stood by your cheating yeah. ass yeah and you leave him after oh he god. gave you all his money to get you the best lawyers to stop you from you know being hanged yeah <laughs> Now, um, what goes around comes around, as many mm -hmm. people say. And she actually died like four years later. Yeah. She was only 28, but she died of tuberculosis Gosh. at the Chicago Fresh Air Sanatorium, um, where she was staying under the name of Beulah Stevens. And it was literally only four years after her acquittal on charges right. of murder. Yeah. So she didn't live a very long life. Yeah. But her life was very interesting <laughs> God. now on to the Velma of the situation yes this, uh this was uh Belva Belva Gartner um now her story in comparison to Beulah's story is a little bit more removed from the story they end up putting in the play okay um so Beulah's is actually incredibly close to what yeah. ended up being in the play yeah. Belva's not so much right Belva herself was actually born Belva Eleonora Boosinger on September 14th, 1884. So she's mm. a little bit older. Yeah. Um, in Litchfield, Illinois, to a Mary Jane and Charles Boosinger. Um, she was three times divorced cabaret singer who used to go by the professional name of Belle Brown. Now, on March the 11th in the same year, 1924, Belva Gartner allegedly shot and killed her lover, Walter Law, a married man who had one child. Yeah. Um, Law was actually found sprawled in the front seat of Gardner's car with a bottle of gin and a gun lying beside him. And Gartner herself was actually later found in her apartment with blood soaked clothes on the floor. And she confessed that she was drunk while she was driving with Law, right. but couldn't remember what happened. No, she was a mess. She was arrested yeah, <laughs> for the murder of Law um, in March 12th. And she admitted to drinking with Law at various bars and jazz houses. And she said she carried a gun for fear of robbers. Mm. Um, and one of Law's co-workers testified that uh, during the trial that Law had confided to them that Gartner was a possessive lover who threatened him with a knife when he tried to leave her initially. Jeez. And Law apparently, according to this co-worker, believed that Gartner would one day kill him. Mm. Now, Gartner actually ended up uh, giving an interview directly to Maureen Dallas Watkins during yeah. all of this going down. And this is another quote that I really, really love. The way of words that these two women had. Yeah. She told Maureen, no woman can love a man enough to kill him. They aren't worth it because there are always plenty more. Walter was just a kid. 29 and i am 38 why should i have worried whether he loved me or whether he left me gin and guns either one is bad enough but together they get you in a dickens of a mess don't they <laughs> wow. 
direct I love it. quote. It's amazing. It. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that I mean, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. why not? No, um, Gartner was actually defended by a man called William Scott Stewart, who is a different lawyer to the one that Beulah had. Beulah had a gentleman called uh, W.W. O'Brien, mm. but actually, the combination of the two lawyers both ended up becoming the inspiration for Billy Flynn in the okay, play, right? Um, so while they were both defended separately in the play, they're both defended by the same guy. And basically Gartner's defense decided that the way they were going to get around this was that they said during the trial that Law killed himself with the right. gun. Yeah. And she was acquitted <laughs> in June of that year. So she thoroughly got away with it. Yeah. Um, but during all this, they were both locked up in um, murderous, what they call murderous's row in Cook County Jail. Mm. Um, and there was actually an actual cell block in the women's section of the jail that housed Chicago's most notorious killers, right. including Anan and Gartner. Yeah. And apparently there were rumored to have set up their own beauty shop out of their jail cell. Um, and the beauty shop the two ran would help other murderers awaiting their own trials pick out outfits to wear. They teach them how to do their hair and makeup yeah. for the day of the trials. Um, so they really became like the talk of Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Through rumors or truth or whatever it was, Watkins Columns became sensational because she documented all these trials at the Chicago City Courthouse, which actually still stands today. Apparently mm. it's in the northeast corner of Clark and Randolph, if mm. anyone ever wants to go to Chicago yeah. and find it. But her columns became so popular that she, off the basis of them, decided to write the play, yeah. which was initially called Brave Little Women, mm. was never called Chicago. Yeah. Um, and she did it as a class assignment while she was attending Yale Drama School. Mm. Now, the show itself received both popular and critical acclaim and therefore made it to Broadway in 1926, which ended up running for 172 performances. Oh. So it didn't actually run very long yeah. in, in, when, uh, during its initial run as um, Brave Little Women. And it wasn't actually until the 1960s when a lady called Gwen Verdon read the play. Now, Gwen Verdon was the wife of Bob Fosse. Mm. If anyone happens to know the name Bob Fosse. <laughs> um, and she turned to him about the possibility of creating a musical adaptation of the play. Yeah. So we have a lot to thank Gwen Verdon for yeah. <laughs> on this one. And Fosse was so taken by her suggestion that, she, that he actually approached Maureen Watkins himself numerous times to try and buy the rights for the play. Right. And she declined him every single time. Oh my God. It wasn't until six, nine years later, 1969, when she died and uh, her estate ended up being sold, that the rights to the play ended up being sold to the producers of what then became known as Chicago right. and Bob Fosse. Yeah. And between them, they transformed the play into the musical that everyone knows today. So it was a creative team of John Kander, Fred Ebb and Bob Fosse who was the choreographer. Yeah. Um, and they wanted the whole musical to focus on the showbiz aspect of society in Chicago at the time. Right. So really turning in on that celebrity versus the justice system. Yeah. And the, the notoriety that comes with being a celebrity criminal at the mm. time, because that was basically the news back in the day. Yeah. Um, in many respects, you know, pre-TV, what else are you going to do? It's a bit like in you know, medieval times where people would go watch local hangings because that's what you did for entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in order to achieve this overall focus, they created the entire score to reflect what was at the time traditional vaudevillian numbers, mm. which is really showcased in the song, They Both Reach For The Gun, or We yeah. Both Reach For The Gun, depending on what you're listening to. Mm. Um, like, it, when... And I'm saying when, when you watch this number, yeah. you can come... It's like the most vaudeville um very closely followed by uh give them the old razzle dazzle yeah both are billy finn centric i will say yeah <laughs> um richard Gere does a really good performance in both um so then this became the jazz age musical now known as chicago mm. which then first appeared in broadway six years later 1975 and it was nominated for nearly like 
a dozen Tony Awards at the Jeez. time. It was nominated for Best Musical, Best Direction of a Musical for Bob Fosse. But it only ran for two years. It mm. closed in 1977. Right. And actually then two years after that, debuted on the West End in 1979. And actually in comparison, ran for 600 performances before it then closed. Yeah. So it actually lasted longer on the West End than it did in Broadway. Yeah. Surprising for an American musical. <laughs> I, I guess it's some, I don't know if there's just something to do with like, um, I don't know. It's just that sort of, very romanticizing us mm. sort of jazz age thing like yeah i don't know i think it's the same with like when british shows go to the us and yeah and, they, and it's that the sort of the us love the, like sort of british things where it's just like oh it's so yeah. quintessentially british i guess with Even something like it's this it's some <laughs> with something like this it's i guess yeah we kind of a lot of british people see it as this very sort of romanticized jazz age american thing it's like how british loads of british people are like oh the night like 1920s america would have been so amazing to live through yeah the roaring 20s yeah. it's like yeah if you don't include you know everything yeah. <laughs> so i guess it might be something 20s. to do with that maybe but also yeah. i suppose the element of celebrity as well and notoriety is still quite prevalent today yeah. like celebrity culture and stuff like that obviously yeah. it was a little different back in the time because uh, a lot of their celebrities were either you know musicians actors yeah. criminals the mafia yeah <laughs> um but you can see it still today so you know any form of notoriety and it's you know no no news is bad like um, no new oh, what is it um even bad news is good news like for celebrity reputation and status yeah. and stuff like that Oh, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's still surprising, though, in many respects, that it lasted longer on the West End than it did yeah. in Broadway. Yeah. Um, but there was actually quite a bit of a gap between the, the original uh, showing of the musical and what is now known as the current revival. Right. Uh, so in Broadway, it's at the Ambassador Theatre and opened in 1996 okay. and then in 1997 back here in the West End. Yeah. And they are both still going today. Like yeah. the current revivals that are being played are from the mid 1990s. Yeah. They haven't stopped since. In fact, in America on Broadway, it's the second longest running okay. musical on Broadway after Phantom of the Opera. Right. Yeah. Isn't that longest in the UK as well? I think so. Phantom. Yeah. <laughs> or is it Les Mis? I think Phantom is. Isn't it but... Phantom Les Mis Chicago? Something like that. Something yeah. Like that. Quite possibly. Anyone who happens to know, yeah. please direct us. But yeah, Phantom's been going friggin' ever. Yeah. Um, but I'm only feeling Lay Miz is a close second. Mm. Yeah, I have yeah. to fact check that one. Yeah. Um, but since the mid to late 90s, uh, it's taken home six Tony Awards for categories such as Outstanding Revival of a Musical and Outstanding Choreography. Mm. And for anyone who did like GCSE drama and dance, <laughs> the reason we got taken to go see Chicago when I was in high school is because at one point or another, you end up studying Bob Fosse. The oh, style okay. of dance that he created is very particular and right. is really showcased in chicago right. it's the very sort of sorry for anyone that's listening to this on the podcast <laughs> it's very still yeah very tiny movement okay yeah um and we ended up going to do a um dance recital after we went to go see the musical at pineapple studios in london oh, cool. afterwards where one of the dance choreographers from the show came in and over the course of an afternoon teaches you the entire dance to um, all that jazz, which is the yeah. very first number in the musical. Yeah. Um, and I can still do certain bits of the choreography today. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, but it's very, it's very still in a lot of parts of your body. And then you only end up moving like a couple bits. Right. And then it gets bigger as the musical goes on, but it's yeah. actually quite difficult to do. And it's a yeah. style of dancing. Right. But very, once you get a group of you all doing the same thing at the same yeah. time, it's very interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. So anyone gets an opportunity to go see either. Yeah. Well worth it. Um, mm. I think the thing that really surprised me when I went to go watch it in the West End, unlike the movie where it's very 
at certain parts, big, spectacular and stuff like that. The actual West End production, A, for a start, one of the smallest stages I've ever okay. seen on a musical. It's yeah. tiny. It's like a black box. Yeah. It's very, very small, especially considering how many dancers they have. Very minimal. One of the yeah. more minimal shows that I've seen. There is not a lot of stage, if mm. you see what I mean. Yeah. It's, they, they work with the black space that they've got and they make a lot of lighting yeah I suppose it's the word um oh. but it's very interesting to go see it's yeah. very different to a lot of other production but in a very good way yeah it was just surprising when I went to go see it I, I like, wish Ooh. I could like remember it more I think when I saw it it was just like a it wasn't even like a drama school trip it was just a random we went with like trip. science um, really <laughs> yeah we it was like this whole three-day london trip we did and it was like we put, packed every sort of typical london thing into three days so it was like <laughs> madame two swords london zoo yes um thought park i think we went to like on the way Whoa. uh it was like yeah we saw the yeah we saw um chicago but i think because it was just a random trip where we did a bunch of things. There were so many kids there that weren't interested in seeing it. Like, <laughs> so I think we were just sat in like this big group of like 30 year 11s and like loads of them were just like talking. And oh, no. I remember just like, I couldn't focus properly on the whole show. And then like my friend was ill, I think. Oh no. Um, yeah. She was like, she fell ill halfway through. So I went out during the interval I think and we missed like some of the show so oh no um, yeah so it was like kind of I didn't yeah I don't think I properly focused on it the whole time um but like my sister loves it yeah she's she I think she listens to like the soundtrack and stuff a lot mm. um but yeah I'd love to see the show again now that I can actually focus on it properly when I'm not with a load of really annoying 15 year olds that didn't want to be there <laughs> I tell you what, we will do a live episode where we both go up to London and we'll go see Chicago. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because it's still going. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if it wasn't when, you know, it's a bit safer to go back to London. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we need to do that. We will do that. We'll have a whole London day. We will record podcast episodes while we're doing it. We'll yeah. go see Chicago. Just like um, our eventual trip to Japan. Of course, yes. <laughs> where we're going to go see Charlie and Charlie's yeah. going to take us around. Yeah. <laughs> it will happen yeah. one day. Mm -hmm. um, but if we do go and see it, I mean, the amount of actors and actresses who have been in both the Broadway and the West End productions are like loads like yeah. everyone you could possibly think of mel b has been in the broadway production she was mama morton if i remember correctly yeah. um christy brinkley ashley simpson billy ray cyrus has been <laughs> what? yeah he was billy flynn oh my god <laughs> uh sophia vergara she was wow as well she's been in it that's just the west that's just broadway yeah in the west and you've had the likes of i affectionately call him duncan from blue but it's <laughs> yeah. billy flynn for years okay um but david hasselhoff tony hadley jerry springer um <gasps> denise van outen jill halfpenny jennifer ellison uh, claire sweeney uh michelle williams brooke shields <laughs> was roxy hart at one point and then there's oh. ruthie henshaw oh ruthie henshaw ruthie henshaw is the only actress to have played all three of the main female parts you know what i have a feeling she potentially okay. was in it when i saw it do you reckon? Because my sister absolutely adores Ruthie Henshaw. Like right. she, because she also did Billy Elliot. Yes, yeah, she um, did. And my, she does the, um, there's like the, you can watch Billy Elliot live. It's like, you can buy, actually watch the, like the yeah. sort of recording of the show. Um, and my sister loves her so much. Like Billy Elliot is my sister's favorite show ever. And really? yeah, Aww. and she loves Ruthie Henshaw. And I have a feeling she started really liking her since we saw Chicago and maybe she was in it then I need to find the dates when she was in it and see if that actually coincides with it but um, well she's she was Mama Morton back in 2018 I believe so right. if you're thinking 2011 I reckon she would have either been Roxy or Belma yeah because she's been all three it definitely rings a bell that she is. was potentially in it yeah, yeah but she is the only out. actress that has played all three wow. of the female parts over the years so yeah <laughs> that's mad it, is it reminds nuts. me of like Carrie Hope Fletcher like where she's 
she has been eponine forever and then she also then moved on to play fontaine like and she wants to play um when she's older she said she wants to play oh god what's um, the name um the two the, the the woman of the two parents who take um eponine in when she's a kid yes Oh, God, Tenardier? Uh, uh, yeah. L- Lady Tenardier? Yes. That's yeah. the one. She wants to play Lady Tenardier so, when she's older. Yeah, so she could be like that too. She could play all the roles. <laughs> all the roles, with the exception of she said she'll never play. Um... Oh, God, I'm having a real mind <laughs> blank today. Corsette. She'll never oh, play Corsette. Okay. That's the thing, because she doesn't. She said she doesn't have the range that Corsette Yeah needs because yeah. it's very high <laughs> yeah very high you could bust a lung doing those yeah things. yeah um but yeah, yeah. Ruby Henshaw is just like a legend Love Ruby Henshaw. <laughs> she is she really is yeah um but yeah and then of course in 2002 the whole basis of this entire episode Chicago yeah. the musical the movie mm-hmm. starring Renee Zellweger Richard Gere Catherine Zeta-Jones Queen Latifah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Queen Latifah. Yeah. Um, one uh, that it was released on the 27th of December uh, 2002, went yeah. on to win the Academy Award for Best Picture at the 75th Academy That's Award. That's crazy. And is, I believe, one of the few musicals, if not one of the only musicals, to win best picture yeah it's got to be the academy awards this is going this is throwing us back all the way back to our academy awards episode that we did i know right I back just, at the beginning of the podcast i was just gonna say oh probably the most recent one has been la 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 but it didn't because it was it the whole didn't. moonlight was scandal moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> which we yeah. talked about in depth in that in our we academy really awards did. episode we really but, did um, go back and listen to it if you fancy a deep dive into uh, the academy awards yeah from a few years ago um, yeah. but yeah I, I want to say off the top of my head that it's the only musical mm. that's won best picture we need yeah we all need to look that up have to look that up but um yeah so that is the real life inspirations behind chicago the musical cool yeah what's not to love about a bit of murder <laughs> yeah between christmas and new year man <laughs> yeah gotta uh, love i mean we've all we also had a um we like to have a bit of darkness in all of our <laughs> our episodes don't we like oh, our yeah. first festive one was our the glenn miller disappearance Yes, exactly. We love to sprinkle in a bit of a bit of darkness, bit of moida. Yeah, bit of moida, and uh, you know the Roaring Twenties, and you know you don't hear a lot about sort of the Roaring Twenties outside of like New York and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So it's interesting to go into like areas like Chicago back in the day because they're just as notorious. Mm. You just don't hear as much about them, and yeah. um, also you know the the, the writer Walker, Maureen Watkins a fascinating character in herself like a yeah. female, a very successful not only a female journalist reporter yeah. back in the day but female screenplay writer yeah <laughs> um and um, a sensational columnist as well i've just found some other musicals that have won best picture oh i was and gonna say i didn't want to say it was because i have a funny yeah part. there are quite there are quite a few but these go back to like maybe 1920 the... like ah. um but some of the ones that have one best picture and they are like some of the most famous musicals so i guess it makes sense i was gonna um, say off the top of my head i was sitting there going what's the betting like the sound of music or so on and stuff like yeah. that yeah so oliver oh, in 1968 yeah um there's someone here that i've never heard of an american in paris oh yeah was i know 1951 that one, yeah. um west side story of course, <laughs> on a topical note. Yeah, West Side Story, oh the original one. Bloody oh, hell. You went I, to go see I saw one West Side day, Story, yeah. I, my God. So anyone that knows me knows that I have a heart of stone and I don't cry at films. Yeah. I cried, fully Seriously. cried at West Side Story. Like, oh, no. proper tears down the cheeks, crying. Oh, like, no. it was, I made, it made me so glad that masks are now compulsory in cinemas again, because... <laughs> Like I covered half my face with a mask and just like, oh my god! Like it's one of those things where you fully know what's going to happen. Like, well, yeah. Even they if you haven't seen it before, much. if you know that it's based on Romeo and Juliet, yeah, you know that it's not going to be happy. Yeah. But even so, just 
it made me cry and then by the end of it I'd like thought I'd recovered by the credits and then Stephen Sondheim came up in the credits <gasps> oh, and then no. I just like I just started crying again like oh, no. I just had like a single tear <laughs> like, <laughs> like a single perfect tear I was just like okay I've recovered from this now um but yeah and then it came up with like Stephen Sondheim and I was just like oh, oh god Stephen dear. Sondheim Steve. <laughs> oh. but oh, it was if you god. can look past Ansel Elcourt yeah it was great <laughs> I loved yes. it I mean I I love Rachel Zegler so much oh my god she's amazing oh. she's the reason I want to go watch yeah, it and it's... she was so good in it she was amazing um oh. the one thing I love which is turning into a tangent about West Side Story I don't care um, West Side Story but uh it uh, the thing that Steven Spielberg said that he made a conscious effort to do is not have any subtitles when they're when they're speaking Spanish throughout the film. Good, yeah. So because he said it's like disrespectful to Spanish people to sh like why is yeah. English the default? Um, exactly. So they like all the Puerto Ricans throughout the film are like they kind of uh dip in and out of like spanish and english oh, um, wow. because a lot of the time they're speaking spanish and then you get certain characters like ariana debose is another one who is just incredible Ooh. um hamilton fame if you don't know if you uh recognize that name she was in hamilton um she constantly is just like speak english we need to practice because obviously yeah. they're trying to there's a rift between the, the Americans and the Puerto Ricans um yeah. so yeah they kind of dip in and out of like Spanish and English but every time anyone's speaking Spanish you don't get subtitles you just sort Good. of you get what's happening just based on like context clues yeah because if you're going to put the subtitles up for yeah. Spanish you should put subtitles up for English yeah exactly as well you so, don't just do it for the Spanish bits no it was so strange hearing Rachel Zegler like with a really strong like Puerto Rican accent and then speaking mm -hmm. Spanish all the way through the film and I was like this is so weird That's I'm so the... used to just hearing her like American um it's but... her first major production isn't it yeah as well. it like the credit said like introducing Rachel Zegler and I was like oh my god this is just insane what a way to start <sighs> off your acting career yeah. like the screen. thing is she she said she has been playing Maria in West Side Story since she was 16 wow she's um there's like she posted loads of pictures on her, her instagram of like pictures from when she's a teenager and she's been like in school productions and all sorts always playing maria so then to so actually be casting the steven spielberg, spielberg. Like, remake it was just like Let's oh go. amazing but yeah it was so Plus, good they had Rita, I know for a fact Rita Morano's in it. Yeah, sure. The original Anita. I love her so much. I actually oh. think she, when she starts singing somewhere, was the point where I probably started crying. Yeah. And then <laughs> continued crying towards to the very end of the film. Somewhere, but it's such an emotional oh. song. Oh my god um yeah Ansel Elgort was interesting casting I mean his his singing was a lot better than I thought it was going to be but his like miming to the singing was not very good like mm. um I could tell that he was miming the songs do you know what I mean yeah um and it was just like uh, yeah I don't know he just didn't really have any there was no real like chemistry between them at all which no. was which sucked um I, yeah, I, uh, if you can get past Anne as well, also be a problematic <laughs> human, um, then oh. it was actually amazing. Like, I loved it. He um, always just seems so stuck up in anything he's really I ever don't been. Like, I don't like his acting, really. I mean, mm. I, he, I liked him in uh, Baby Driver because he suited mm. the character, I think. Yeah. But... It's really annoying because no, I really not... like the movie Baby Driver. Yeah. It's a really cleverly made movie. Yeah. I'm just, and I'm it's got like John I'm... Hamm in it. And I love John Hamm. And yeah. then when all the shit about Ansel got came out. It was and like... also um, uh, Thingy, what's his name? Kevin Spacey is also in it. Yeah. Which... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. No. Um, but yeah. Fuck's sake. Um, but, yeah. Stop being douchebags in real movies. I know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, what, uh, Sound of Music, as you said, 1965, uh, oh, and then also, Julie Andrews. Um, Julie. these are all around the same time, actually, and then My Fair Lady of was uh, 1964, so there were lots in the 60s yeah. that got best pictures. We've got, but yeah. Gay musical, yeah, Chicago. Yeah, like if West Side Story, 61, My Fair Lady, 64, Sound of Music, 65, <laughs> 
Like, yeah, there's there's the so many was musical. Was Oliver there, like... was sixty eight. Like hell. clearly, that was the decade of of the musicals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I definitely need to watch Chicago. You do. Um, it's really and, good. Yeah, we should watch it together, and then yes. we plan our trip to London to go and see the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that was a super huge tangent, as usual. Um, <laughs> When has um, that ever stopped us? That's been a problem from the beginning. I know. We're two years in, yeah. we made a whole Patreon thing about the fact <laughs> that we do tangents. Yeah. It's pretty much stuck in there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Next week is going to be, well, our first episode of the new year. Like this yeah. is our this is our last episode of this year. Oh, God. crazy. Um. So join us next week for our hundredth episode, which is super amazing. Episode. Um and yeah i mean if you follow us on instagram you may have kind of got a clue of what we might be doing um True. but um yeah it's very exciting um and yeah it's gonna be we're pretty just, different to anything yeah. we've done but and we're we're just we've started we have our like schedule already started for next year i think <sighs> we're already like we have all of our recording um planned and scheduled up to march um guys have... you you can't Oh my god! I don't want to say anything because I want to either I, we, like we've we've mentioned it on yeah um, Patreon again. If you want like spoilers for stuff that we've got coming up, join us on Patreon because that's where we put them all. Yeah. I really want to tell you guys what we got planned for the oh. new year because <laughs> we have so we have many cool plans, so many cool plans, and like plans with other people. Yeah, that we have coming that are actually coming to fruition. And yeah, it's oh. Can't wait for you Very to you guys to listen to what we're doing in the new yep. year. But let's just say we are going out there in terms yes. of who we're talking to yeah. and what's got coming up and the content and, that we've yeah. got planned. And- Very exciting. Um, but yeah, as as we said, like everyone on Patreon will know far in advance what we're doing. So if you want yes. all the spoilers, if you want to know before anyone else what we're doing, um, and you just want to have also little deep dives into our stats and anything like that if you're just interested in in following us knowing what it's coming up in advance then head over to our patreon and join our little community Uh, it's only two pounds a month and you will get early episodes you will get bonus episodes which we're really focusing on at the moment Mm. um i'm about to record one after this in fact um yeah several bonus episodes a month um just extra bonus content uh we'll send you a postcard um so many spoilers of things that <laughs> will be coming up um like you'll yeah find out what episodes are coming up in advance and so much we're posting yes. on there quite a lot at the moment um yes. we have as we mentioned we have our tangent tuesday series where we just give you recommendations of things we've been loving um that month we actually have some exciting guest tangent tuesday slots yes. coming up next year where we have a few guest episodes planned for the main podcast we'll also be having them on our patreon on our tangent tuesday which is really cool um yeah yeah, we've got some very exciting plans over there too um so if you want all of that for only two pounds a month then head over to patreon.com slash learn about pod and come and join us over there it's a lot of fun little community yeah if you can't support us uh, uh, via Patreon, that's absolutely fine. Come find us on our social media platforms. Yes. Uh, Instagram, especially. We are very prevalent on Instagram at the moment. Yeah. Um, lots of stuff going up there. It's uh, Learn About Pod on there. Yes. Um, so don't feel that you have to uh, give us money in order to support us. Yeah. We will also love you incredibly for coming on over there and getting the free stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, just listening to our episodes stuff. is great too. Exactly. Yeah. Um, leave us a little review talking about our spot like uh, for any podcast places wherever you get your podcasts if you have the opportunity to start and leave a review that always helps um for some reason it really helps uh showcase us to new listeners by putting on ratings and reviews so if you have five seconds algorithm (laughs) bloody algorithms but yeah if you have two seconds and want to leave us a, a, a review and a star rating please do that would mean the world to us yeah it would um so i guess this is it for 2021 oh god yes we will see you in a brand new year with our hundredth episode and Um, to infinity and beyond (laughs) (laughs) Uh, thanks for joining us for another whole year 
we're excited for an, an entire new year to come. Um, yeah. And we hope you all stick with us for this whole new year too, where yes. we have plenty of exciting things coming up. Um, so yeah, we'll see you next time for our 100th episode celebration. <laughs> yes. And in the interim, have a very safe, wonderful and happy new year. Yes. Enjoy the celebrations. We will see you on the third. So yes. hopefully your hangovers will be gone by then. Yeah. <laughs> see you then. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Happy New Year.